That was insane. <laughs> uh -oh, a little waterfall. Whew. Oh man. <laughs> there a groundhog popping out of the hole. This is crazy. Hey there fellow adventurers, it's Wes here from Travel with Wes, and today I'm taking you on an unforgettable journey into the heart of Iceland's Vatnajökull Glacier. On today's adventure, I've linked up with local guide of Vatnajökull to embark on their Ice Caves Discovery Tour, where we'll visit not one, not two, but three separate blue ice caves out on the glacier. Along the way, I'll share with you insider tips and mistakes to avoid when spending an afternoon out hiking on a glacier in Iceland's unpredictable and volatile weather. We're out hiking on the glacier now to the next ice cave. Most of the tour groups actually turn back after the first one. So if you go with a local guide about Njoko, you could see more than that first one. So really excited to see what we got up here. It's really cool out. The winds died down, the rain stopped. Ah, it's just beautiful. It's very quiet, very peaceful out here. So let's jump right in. In terms of location, this activity starts at the Jokul Sarlon Glacier Lagoon parking lot. Be sure to arrive early since the main parking lot can fill up. But if you can't get a spot here, don't worry. There's a ton more parking across the street near Diamond Beach. Be sure to budget some time for exploring the beach area and lagoon after your glacier hike since they're both really beautiful areas to explore in person. Jokul Sarlon Lagoon is about a five hour drive from Reykjavik, which means you'll need to find accommodations nearby and you can't or won't want to do this as a day trip from the capital city. For anyone traveling across Iceland in a camper van like me, during the winter, your two best campsite options are Skaftafell or Vesterhorn, each of which are about a one hour drive away. If you've rented a car, you could also consider spending the night in the town of Hoffen, which is about one hour away, or you could find a hotel just off Ring Road. I'll leave some links in the description to these campsites and hotels so you can pull them up easily on your own. Once you've made it to the Jokul Sarlon parking lot, you'll want to locate the orange and black local guide of Vatna Jokul vehicle where you'll get checked in and fitted for your safety gear. Local guide will provide you with spikes, crampons, a safety harness, and helmet for the activity. If you need better footwear for hiking out on the glacier, keep in mind that you can also rent boots here for an additional fee. After getting fitted for my gear, I made my way over to the Super Jeep and got loaded up for the ride out to the hike starting point. We backtracked down Ring Road a little bit before heading down a 4x4 only road to enjoy my first Super Jeep ride of the trip. Once we successfully navigated the extremely rugged road out to the glacier, you'll be dropped off just a short distance from Vatnajökull's massive sea of ice. This is Europe's largest glacier and having the opportunity to experience it up close on foot is a really special opportunity. Once you arrive, you'll put on your safety harness, helmet, and micro spikes before venturing out onto Vatnajökull. The first blue ice cave you'll visit isn't too far away, but it's also one of the more popular ones that other tour operators frequent as well. Once our guides deemed the cave safe and clear of other groups, we started our descent down into our first blue ice cave of the trip. Climbing down into Vatnajökull was a surreal experience. The vibrant blue color of the ice makes you feel like you're in another world. An experience not too uncommon across Iceland, I have learned. As your group works through the first ice cave, you'll have plenty of opportunities to take your time soaking up the incredible colors and realizing the fact that you've climbed down inside Europe's largest glacier. The deeper you go, the darker it gets as less and less light is able to penetrate through the surface. As you descend deeper into the cave, you'll start to notice black volcanic ash coating certain areas of the cave walls, creating really unique visuals against the deep blue colors in the ice. While the lighter areas of the cave make for better photo ops, I really enjoyed the experience in the deepest, darkest portions of the ice caves, even though it was difficult to capture those on camera due to the lack of light. 
You'll just have to get down there and experience it for yourself. After making our way through the first ice cave, it was time to get back out on the glacier and start the real hiking portion of our day. Tour companies like Local Guide offer ice cave tours of different lengths and physical activity levels. The shortest options will typically stop here without really hiking and only exploring the closest ice caves. But this is where our tour gets really fun since we basically had the entire glacier to ourselves at this point and the next two caves we'd visit would be void of other people. While our micro spikes were sufficient for navigating the first cave, at this point we needed real crampons with bigger spikes for hiking out onto the super dense ice of the glacier. Also at this point, we were starting to encounter extremely strong wind and rain, so it's really important that you pack the right gear for this experience. Now, once we navigated the volatile Iceland weather out on the glacier's exposed surface, we finally arrived at our second ice cave. Oscar headed down first to scope out the situation and make sure everything was safe for our group to proceed inside. Here we encountered even more really unique glacial ice cave features and had some really amazing photo opportunities. This was a really nice stop because even though this cave was smaller, we took our time here and everyone ate their snacks or light lunch near the entrance. Stopping here for a quick lunch break meant everyone had plenty of time to take turns enjoying the cave and taking photos. After a quick break, it was time to make our way over to the third and final ice cave of the day. Although this was the shortest ice cave we visited during the afternoon, it was also the most conducive to taking great photos like the shot I got here. It was a sad realization that at this point we'd be turning back towards our super jeep and making our way off Fatnajokal Glacier. I had such an amazing time with local guide of Vatnajokul on this adventure and our guides Oscar and Barbara really made the experience fun and safe. If you're considering this activity for your Iceland trip, definitely check out local guide and book with peace of mind because they have a great 24 hour cancellation policy. Just make sure that you're visiting during the winter if you hope to explore ice caves because during the summer glacial thawing can cause them to flood or become unstable and unsafe. Also, for anyone that's still a skeptic, yes, the ice caves are in fact as blue or maybe even bluer than what you see in photos and video. So we're working back to our super jeep now. We saw not one, not two, but three different ice caves. Uh, not all the tours that come to the glacier go to that many caves. Uh, so definitely worth checking out the local guide of that jungle. Uh, had a really good time. Really cool experience. Definitely uh, come prepared though with your waterproof stuff and some good boots. Uh, there's a good chance you're gonna get wet. It can be really, really windy, really cold. Uh, but if you come prepared, you'll be just fine. So, yeah, we had a great time. Okay, that's it, guys. This wraps up our journey today into the heart of Europe's largest glacier. Thanks for joining me on today's icy adventure, and don't forget to check out my other guides for more travel planning resources to make your winter Iceland trip truly unforgettable. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to Travel with Wes for more exciting travel inspiration just like this. Until next time, safe travels, and thanks for watching.